Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot and happy 4th of July as well to all my American viewers. Let me know in the comments what you're doing, but most importantly, what are you eating and what are you watching and where are you going for the 4th of July? Because obviously um, those sorts of festivities I've never been a part of, so I want to know. Tell me all about it. Tell me your family traditions. Okay, we are looking also at solar plexus chakra this third chakra is just below and slightly to the left of your rib cage it has two openings front and back your mental capacities and your sense of how you belong in the world are connected to this chakra it relates to your will and how you see your destiny in relation to the universe as a whole Ooh, that's my kind of chakra Although this is very much your mental sphere, it is also connected to your emotions. As so many mental attitudes are derived from your emotions. True. So this chakra is also about how much we take care of ourselves and our self-esteem. Oh gosh. It's a chakra that healers use when giving healing. This will be discussed in part two. If this chakra is functioning fully, you will have a great sense of belonging and you will have an expressive emotional life which creates mental satisfaction and fulfillment rather than worry. This chakra's physical connections are to the organs within solar plexus area, stomach, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen and the nervous system. The related words are, I think, the associated colour is yellow. There you go. There's our little bit from the, oh, because I actually feel like that book might even be mouldy. What is that? It's kind of a bleach or, oh God, let's not, let's not look any further. So today we're going to fling some cards from the sparkly tarot because I thought, seeing as how you're all celebrating and everything, you know, apparently you have fireworks the lot. I'm a bit of a sucker for a firework. I thought we'd have our own, like, Bobby Dazzler of a tarot. Oops. Oh, there's the cards. Okay. Oh, gosh. I've got three, but I want to take a couple more. Oh, wow. It's going to be one of those days where, you know, it's like one of those kind of celebratory days and then I, I just turn up to the party with my party hat and my turd on a plate. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, everybody, catch a whiff. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, totally. Okay. Might as well have used the gummy bears if we wanted it this doom laden. Wish I was doing reversals, but I'm not. Okay. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'm going to put those in order. God, what's going on, folks? Maybe this is because you're like spending long periods of time with your family. <laughs> okay. Overall energy, and can we get some of those yeehaw stars? I can't even get the stars to work. Oh my God. No, sort of. You can sort of faintly see them can't you in the background Swing. okay the full major arcana zero card lots of fun um celebration yes and a feeling that new cycle and looking at the other cards though i see this more about almost bravery and vulnerability because yeah okay look we get the two of pentacles, Jupiter and Capricorn, the need to recreate something, the need to reconfigure something. You can't get rid of it. You might not even want to get rid of it, but you've got to play this game a different way. You know, folk lady is at the 4th of July celebrations and she's dancing, but she's saying, you know, I'm going to dance to the beat of a different drum. I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm doing now, some sort of weird, like, dad at the wedding meets the robot. Yes, dad at the wedding does the worm. Um, yeah, 
you're spinning it through different constellations and you're thinking this may be that someone has brought you a turd on a plate and you're like there's no good end to that what can i do with this how can i glitter it or how can i at least take a different journey i said journey i journeyed on you i'm sorry take a different direction and start something anew this is a big deal to do it this way you know what they don't talk about with the fool itchy nose oh, is that it can often be taking that first leap can feel like hard work because you're going against the grain and you're also going against your comfort zone and sometimes even your instincts but there's like deeper instincts in your situation you've got your kind of surface level instincts and then you've got the stuff that's deeper where you're actually your wisdom lies okay and we've talked about this a lot in the last few days actually about where your wisdom lies and i guess and this is very interesting that solar plexus too is about truth isn't it you know in the frying and bendy rude in the heart of the fairy oracle you've got that man and he's got like the kind of skeleton thing and then there's the solar plexus and it's called the speaker of truth and i'm really really getting that card coming to mind you need to live in your truth you need to speak your truth but at the same time you need to get through a certain quite complex process we have the seven of swords now this can mean that somebody has kind of slipped something by you or brought you a turd on a plate or I don't see this as a massive transgression, but it's something that doesn't quite sit well with you. But it's also about you having to play your cards quite close to your chest as well. Sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to play the game because them's the rules. And we don't like it, but actually, for the sake of the bigger picture, we need to behave in a certain way, okay? You've got the Eight of Swords, which wanted to come out in the reverse, but I'm not doing reversals today. This is about what mentally binds you, what keeps you stuck, what stops you from saying how you feel. And we also have the Eight of Cups, which says it may in some... And this is complicated. I know. Happy Fourth of July. This is complicated because... There is no clear answer and some and very often, not even sometimes in life, we're choosing between grey areas. We're never going, oh, well, shall I do that or that? That's awful and that's good. So I'll just do the good one. It's more like that brings with it that set of problems. This brings with it that set of problems. But ultimately, I need to be heading for X direction. This is the bigger picture. Saturn went retrograde a few days ago. Saturn in Pisces went retrograde. Um, I don't know much, but I do know that obligations may have to be retrodden if Saturn goes retrograde, reviewed, rewalked, retrodden, reconsidered. And that is about reconsidering. Maybe you said you'd do something and now you can't do it. Maybe they said they'd do something and they can't do it. Someone said they'd do something and they can't do it. And I guess that someone's probably you, but the way out of it is a bit tricky, okay? We've got the Four of Cups as well, which is just taking yourself into emotional neutral whenever this gets to feel a bit too much or a bit too overwhelming. The Fool is lucky because the Fool is innocent. The Zero knows nothing. It may be that you need to almost go back to basics. How did you feel about this when it first happened? What was your first instinct? What was your first reaction? Okay. Definitely leave me a comment about this reading. If you're still watching. Oh yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Right. Wisdom of the Oracle. <laughs> Chop wood. That's it. Sometimes when you don't know where you're going, you're just putting one foot in front of the other. And at some point in this situation, that's what you're going to be doing. 
There are more dramatic points, like the Eight of Cups, where you see the restriction and you refuse to let it kind of keep you in. But there's also the Four of Cups where you're just going to have to skim some neutral territory for a while. But you will get there if you keep your attitude like the Fool, keep it open. What reading? Okay, leave me a comment, let me know, and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.